Welcome to Elect Connect, a candidate forum brought to you by the Greater Bloomington Chamber of Commerce. I'm Mary Morgan, the Chamber's Director of Advocacy and Public Policy, and we'll be talking with Jeff McKim, a Democrat who's running for Monroe County Council at large. First, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Without them, this work could not be possible. Uh, those sponsors include German American Bank, Bunger and Robertson, the City of Bloomington, Hoosier Energy, Indiana University, and Smithville. And now we would like to welcome Jeff McKim, again with the Democratic Party primary, uh, running for Monroe County Council at large candidate. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Well, why don't we start out um, by you just telling us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in running for this office. Well, I have been serving on the Monroe County Council now for 12 years. Um, it's, it's, I'm finishing up my, my third term this year. And uh, I've lived in the community pro since 1986, uh, I believe. You know, came originally with, uh, as a student from at Indiana University and have just kind of moved on, have, uh, you know, a, a real job and a house and two kids and a wife and uh, have made Monroe County my home. Um, I right now in my kind of my day job, quote unquote, I work as a cybersecurity specialist for uh, uh, a contractor that works primarily or that I work primarily with the National Park Service um, in, in cybersecurity and, and information protection type issues. And, um, you know, I've, I, uh, I'm running again because I think there's still a lot more to do. I've gained a lot of experience in, uh, in serving on the county council and, you know, county government is complicated and it, um, it's kind of, it's arcane. It's complicated sometimes by design and it take, it can take years to build up the expertise and relationships to be effective, I think. And, so, um, you know, I, 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 I think I've done a pretty good job. I've gotten uh, a lot of experience. Uh, I've served, I think I've served my constituents well, and there's still a lot more to do. So I'm, I would still like to serve, and I, I appreciate everybody considering me. Great, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about your outlook for Monroe County uh, for the remainder of 2020 and into 2021? Um, specifically, how do you think the COVID-19 fallout will affect the budget? for the county and what changes would you support to address any budget shortfalls? Well, we are um, very early in the stages of being able to assess the impact, obviously, because I, I don't think, even think that we know if we're at the bottom of the uh, economic uh, dip or on the other side of, uh, of the curve, as it were. And so, you know, I think all we can do now is assess the situation as we know it and project kind of what some of the potential impacts would be. And so on the county council, we formed a, a task force of three of us, uh, and I'm one of them who is assessing the budgetary impacts uh, of the crisis. And, um, you know, the, the, the crisis is gonna appear in a, lot, in a lot of different ways. In the really short term, uh, obviously it hits us in the innkeeper's tax, uh, which is important because not only does it support uh, tourism and operations of the uh, maintenance of the convention center, but it also pays for the existing debt on the convention center. And so that's obviously the, uh, an area that we're monitoring uh, closely. Another very short-term impact is on highway funding uh, because that comes primarily from gas and special fuels taxes. Um, I mean, it's paid to, the, paid to the state and then the state distributes it to, the, to local governments. And obviously people are driving a lot less uh, right now, some analysis that um, the, the, the state has done, done along in conjunction with Purdue is estimating that we could see 30 to 50 percent drop in um, highway funding revenues in the short term. Now, obviously, that, you know, the, the thing about highway is that they it, it's going to come pretty quickly. So we'll know we'll know pretty quickly and it could also rebound fairly quickly. Um, but we have to be very concerned about that because that's going to obviously uh, impair our ability to maintain um, our highways. And, you know, one of the things that they definitely, that they, one of the first things they teach you in road school is that you do not want to let your pavement 
degrade because if you do, if it gets below a certain point, then it becomes vastly more expensive to, to maintain and then eventually you have to replace it. So we have to make sure we, we um, keep unnecessary costs to a minimum and really focus on maintaining the, uh, the quality of the, of the pavement, essentially maintaining our existing infrastructure. Um, longer term, clearly the income tax is going to be uh, probably one of the largest impacts. If people are earning less, if Monroe County residents are earning less income, then uh, the income tax that goes to local governments is going to decline as well. Unfortunately, those income taxes are determined in arrears. So in 2021, next year's budget, the income tax is going to be income that was, uh, and taxes that were paid in, uh, on income that was earned in 2019. So that's sort of already in the bag, uh, as it were. Uh, there might be an effect because the governor's extended the, um, the, the deadline to pay taxes, depending on how many people take advantage of that. And if the state doesn't change the way that they uh, determine those tax distributions, then there could be a, a delay. You know, we might, we might uh, be shorted some in 2021 that would then be paid in 2022. But because, 20, because the revenue we get in 2022 will be income earned in 2020, clearly that is going to be down. We just don't know how much yet. Um, so we're starting to, um, to do what we can. We, at the last county council meeting, we uh, tabled a number of requests for um, spending that had already been essentially agreed upon, uh, but we've just decided that they were not essential at the moment and we're going to uh, postpone them until we know more what the situation is going to be if the economy is going to rebound quickly. Can you give a couple examples of that, things that you postponed? Um, it was, several of them were, were um, capital items, like uh, some uh, renovation in the justice building of, of the HVAC system, um, which we've been told it could be, um, it could be done later. There were the, that, that was one of them. Um, there were a couple other uh, capital projects around the county. There were some um, some fixing of the um, the stones outside the courthouse, uh, you know, that are is a nice to have, and we'd like to do that, and we had already agreed to pay for it, but it needs to wait. Right. Um, right. So there there are, there are things like that that uh, that definitely had to be uh, put off. We're also considering at tonight's ca county council meeting a proposal for a, a hiring freeze uh, for county employees. Um, just to, you know, make sure that until we know what's going on, it'll be hopefully short term, but until we know what's going on, we want to make sure that we keep expenditures to a minimum. Sure. And for anybody who's watching this, tonight means um, Tuesday, April 28th. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, so uh, shifting a little bit, the, the COVID-19 crisis has put the expansion of the Monroe County Convention Center on the back burner, um, obviously. What's your outlook for that project long term? You know, honestly, I, I can't say yet. I am, I think that's something we're going to seriously have to reevaluate. Um, you know, I have been one of the biggest supporters of that project. Um, I think it is, um, my gut says that, that people will still want to travel and want to visit Bloomington in the, in the future, but I think we're just not anywhere near a position where we, we know if the, how quickly that kind of business is going to rebound. And, and, you know, one of the things that it really shows us is that if we're going, uh, it shows us, or it will show us hopefully in the next two months, how low our food and beverage tax revenues really could get. And if we're going to bond on that, um, those revenues, you know, and any lender is certainly going to uh, take that into account. And so, um, I think we're going to have to, regardless of what happens, we're going to have to rethink the financial plan for, uh, for what kind of expansion of food and beverage tax it could support. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone ever thought that, you know, I think we expected that the, there to be possibilities of going down. I mean, that's certainly a possibility. We, you know, in the 25 years of a bond, there could certainly be a recession or two in there. Right. Um, but I, I think this, this um, sets a floor that no one ever anticipated would be that low. So. Yeah. I think it's 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 just too soon to um, to make that determination. Okay. Um, what actions would you say that um, by the Monroe County Council most directly affect local businesses, and how do you solicit feedback from businesses when you're making decisions? 
Um, well, okay. How do you know? How, how do we? Um, I think one of them is clearly the zoning code, um, and that's been sort of a, an area of, of I'd say, contention um, over the years. That our zoning code is maybe uh, more opaque than it needs to be, and it, e even given the high standards that we have, that what we want to have for planning around here, it it stretches out the timeline for businesses much more than it needs to. Um, and that, that's one area where the, the very process does get us a lot of feedback for, for businesses. We had, uh, particularly when we went through the urbanizing area uh, plan, we, um, you know, we got, there, there were uh, focus groups and interest groups that participated very actively that included the, the business community. I know both the chamber and the BEDC uh, participated very actively and, and read those uh, the draft plans carefully. And I anticipate the same thing to happen as we move forward in adopting a new county zoning code. Um, I anticipate us actively on the plan. I happen to also serve on the plan commission as the county council representative. And um, I plan to actively um, work with, with the chamber and other, and the BEDC and other groups that, um, th that represent business interests to solicit feedback and input on where we should be, the Board of Realtors, where we should be uh, uh, going as far as uh, uh, making, making things more predictable and transparent for businesses. You know, I can't always say that, that, that it'll be easier in the sense we don't necessarily want to relax standards, but I think making, making the process more transparent and predictable is something we can all agree on. Um, so that's, that's probably one of the biggest areas in which the county uh, affects business. Of course, we also, the county council also has to um, grant tax abatements in the um, unincorporated areas of the county. And um, the, we usually, we work very closely with uh, representatives of the business community when we're taking uh, input on granting a tax abatement as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, what are some changes at the state level that you would like to um, see and, and advocate for that would um, benefit Monroe County? Well, I think the one that we um, talked about uh, most recently is a change in the process for um, determining for, for setting um, local income tax rates. Um, I know that that got uh, b before the COVID pandemic that uh, of course, the, the, um, the mayor of the city of Bloomington proposed a, a local income tax uh, increase. And the way that the, the law was currently structured or is currently structured, the city council can unilaterally raise the tax rate on the entire um, county. And so I've been advocating for an approach that um, the General Assembly has actually considered in the past and hopefully will again that would uh, allow the county allow the county to have a, a tax rate for the entire county that is determined by the county council and then allow municipalities to set their own income tax rate on top of that county tax rate that apply only to residents of the municipality. And I think that's a system that would be fair to everybody concerned and it would give <coughs> excuse me, both counties and cities the uh, ability to set tax rates that would be appropriate for uh, for their needs and the needs of their residents. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a big one that I'd be um, advocating for. Okay, great. Um, is there anything uh, you'd like to add as we wrap up? Um, no, I appreciate uh, the chamber uh, you know, interviewing candidates uh, like this. I think that there's, uh, I, I hope that um, we can be on the other side of this pandemic soon, you know, in a matter of months rather than years and uh, that we can start working on other priorities. So I, I you know, it has always been um, one of my priorities to um, support more affordable housing. And the, although, you know, I think there is a chance that the pandemic will kind of tamp down on some of the, uh, the excessive values of urban property, it's not going to fundamentally change the supply and demand imbalance that we have in Bloomington. So we still need, we're still going to need a, a, a higher supply of housing to be able to, to meet the demand and to be able to meet the demand at lower price points. So, and I think there are a lot of um, tools that the county has available to it that we can use. Um, and so, you know, at any time, I'd be happy to talk with any of your members about, about those kinds of proposals. Well, thank you very much. Um, 
Jeff McKim, uh, Democratic Party primary, Monroe County Council at large candidate. Um, thanks again for uh, spending a few minutes talking with us. Um, again, uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors for Elect Connect, uh, German American Bank, Bunger and Robertson, City of Bloomington, Hoosier Energy, Indiana University, and Smithville. And finally, um, Remember that the primary elections are June 2nd this year, and all voters are eligible to vote by mail. Um, we have a couple of resources for you, uh, the Monroe County election site at monroecountyvoters.us, and our own primary election site, chamberbloomington.org slash 2020 hyphen primary hyphen election. Thanks again for watching.